Hey there, welcome to Getting It Done North of 7. Today's video is about a broken spring on garage door repair. So what happened was I came home the other day and I hit the garage door opener and the door only went open so far. And I want to show you what that looks like. So there you go, it only opens up so far and I didn't know exactly what to think of it. So when I went into the house and came in to the garage through the inside door, I looked up at the garage door and one spring was missing. And I'm like, what the heck? So I looked down on the floor and one of my extension springs was down underneath my boat trailer. Now I was just thinking, what if I had a nice car sitting in there and that spring had flew off and hit landed on top of that car? So what I realized too is I don't have uh, safety cables going through those extension springs for the garage door. So we're gonna install one of those today too. Actually, I'm gonna change both springs on the door because the springs lose tension after a while. They become brittle, the steel becomes weak, and that's why it broke. So we're gonna change both springs on the door because if one is weak, the other one must be getting weak too. And when I bought the springs, they come in a kit with safety cables, so why not change both? It's not a big job, it's easy to do, and we're gonna to get to it right now. So in a second, I'm gonna show you the, sp the broken spring, but first, I'm gonna unplug the garage door opener for safety, and then we're gonna open the door itself. So then we're gonna put a pair of ice grips on the door uh, roller and track just to stop the door from coming back down because we have to open the door all the way to take tension off the springs. Now there's the good spring. And when it's the door is down like that, there's a lot of tension in that spring. So you can imagine when it broke that the, the spring just flew off of there. And I'm gonna show you what happened with this spring. All right, so the first thing I noticed when I found the spring underneath my tr boat trailer that the spring had a funny look to it. You see how it's kind of out of whack? It's not like the rest of the spring. It's got this crazy look. That means that spring has broke in this area. It's, it's gone out of conformity, I guess you would call it. But also notice that at this end, where it attaches to um, the, the, the arm of the, that holds the garage door railing, it broke there. It also broke at this end where the pulley is. So it broke at two ends, but it probably had a fault here first, I'm thinking. And then it finally let go at these ends. We'll get the garage door in the up position in a safe manner so that we take all the tension off the other spring over there. And so we can attach the new spring on. And then once this is done, I'll attach the other spring. But I'll just show you guys the one spring because all you need to see is me do it once. All right, so first we'll... Uh, pull on this to unattach the door. All right, so I got the door open and I put a pair of vice grips, pliers, up there on the track as you can see, and that'll stop the door from coming down. And just to be extra sure, I put one on this side as well, and that'll lock the door into place. That door cannot come down now, so it'll be safe to change the springs. Now I know you can't tell on the other door, but this is, I have two doors in this garage, and you can see when the door is all the way open, the tension is off that spring. It's, it's not stretched out, all the tension's off, and it'll make it easier to change the door spring, and a lot safer. Of course, we don't have to worry about this one, but it'll be a lot safer putting on the new spring as well, because we don't have to stretch it. Okay, one thing I wanted to mention was how to choose the right spring for your garage door because there is different tensions, spring tensions for different weights of door. So the best way to check the weight of your door is to put like a bathroom scale underneath the door. So all you have to do is when you unhook the springs from your door, you just let the door free weight itself down onto the scale and that will give you a rough idea what the weight of your door is. Mine is 145 pounds. And that's why I got the dark blue. It's good for doors between 135 and 145 pounds. And you can see there's five different colors. Uh, green's a little bit lighter, and the light blue is a little bit lighter, and then you get into like browns and gold or yellow, like, yeah, gold. 
It's good for 175 to 185 pound garage doors. Those must be big, heavy doors. So just make sure that you get the right tension of spring for the weight of your garage door. All right, so like I said, I didn't have safety cables for, that go through the spring. So in the kit I bought, they came with safety cables. So all you do is you wrap the cable. I see it has a looped end. So I just ran the cable through the loop and I'm trying to keep it right in line with where the spring will go. The spring will hook up right here on this eye hook. So this, the safety cable will run down through the center of the spring, attach at the front over there by the front of the, by the door. And uh, yeah, I just want to keep it in line. That's this is where I want the spring to go down through this part here. If it'll go down there. There we go. So we're going to feed that we're going to feed that uh, cable through the through the spring all the way, and it'll tighten up here after. And right now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay it here on top of the door until I get ready at the other end. Until I get ready at the other end, and then I'm going to put this part here. This is where you hook uh, the, the cable to the other end and you'll have a bolt and a nut. And there's holes down the other end, I'll show you in a second. But you want to adjust this properly so that the cable's got some tightness to it. It doesn't have to be super tight, but you know, take, it's got to be tight enough that there's no slack. Alright, so I don't know how well you can see this, but I have these S-hooks. I had to buy these from the hardware store. And I couldn't get the ones I really wanted with the closed, uh, uh, closer closed ends here, more tighter. So I just put them in the vise I have in the garage and, and squeeze these, crimp them down so it's a little bit of a tighter uh, opening so that the n nothing falls out. So I'll just put one there and then I'll bring the spring over and put the spring on that part of the hook. And I'll tighten the cable up. Not that it matters right now, but it'll all tighten up once everything's hooked. So it'll fit like that. And then I'll have a hook down at the other end as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this bracket here off of the pulley, run it through the spring, just bring the spring in through here. I'll show you in a second. And then just attach this back to the pulley. So there you go. I'll just run this through the hole in the eye in the spring and then attach this back onto here. Okay, this is what I'm talking about right here through the eye of the spring, just like that, the loop. And then I'll just attach the cable and the pulley back in here. So we'll put the cable in first. Don't forget that part. Then we'll just run this here like this. Let the cable catch on the pulley and we'll feed our bolt through and I probably should have had in the other hand. Just like that. Run it through on this side. As you can see, everything's lined up. Then we'll run the nut, put the nut back on here like this. Make sure that that pulley can turn so you don't want it too tight. And there we go, it's attached. And then I'll hook up the, the safety cable way over there at the other end on this bracket here. What I have to do is get this cable back out on this pulley. And that should be just right, the way it was. Because all we're doing is replacing the spring, right? So we'll just get that right back up here around the pulley. There we go. Just wrap it around the pulley, make sure it's in the groove. And just like that, you can see that the spring has picked up the way it should. And like I said, now I'll just hook up the safety cable up to here somewhere. We'll figure that out in a second. Okay, so it's getting late. I'm losing light here, but you can see that uh, safety cable is on now. I attached it over here. You can see, um, I'll point it out to you. I attached it over here. 
right like this. You can see it's just, it's, it's tight, but it's not over tight, right? And the pulley is hooked up fine. I don't think the safety cable will interfere with the pulley at all. And we're gonna give this a try. So the first thing we wanna do is unhook our safety vice grips. Took them off. And then we're gonna plug our garage door opener back in. Then I'm gonna close the door manually. So we make sure this is locked in place because when the garage door opens, it won't work. So as you can see, we have full tension on our spring now. Everything looks good. Nothing's binding up with each other. We've got our safety chain in. It looks just like the opposite side. All right, so now we're gonna try out the door and see if everything works right. Wish me luck. So far, so good. Look at that. And we'll close it again. I don't have a garage door opener. The, I don't have the remote for it, I lost it. So I'm just using the one on the wall here. As you can see, it's working perfect. I'm really happy with it. Now I'll go ahead and change the spring on the other side. So there you have it. I hope this broken spring on garage door repair really helps you. It's not a hard job as long as you have everything you need. I had to get those eye hooks because of my situation. So I just adapted and, and made it work. So that probably would have been like a $300 repair if I called somebody. And you know what? It really isn't a hard job. As long as you put the door in the up position all the way, put your safety vice grips on to make sure that the door doesn't come down or put a step ladder up underneath the door and, if, and just wedge it underneath the door so that it can't come down. And that'll take all the tension off your springs and then you're able to change the springs out for the new ones or like in my case the spring was gone it fell off and i just had to put the new spring up so again if this broken spring on a garage door repair really helped you please hit that thumbs up it really helps me out and don't forget to go watch the video i have i'll put a description down below and maybe on a card up here where i show you how to hook up safety cables inside your springs for your garage door springs in case you don't have them. It's a good idea to have those springs because like I said, mine fell down. It could have damaged a car that was inside. I used to have an old car in the garage. If that would have landed on the hood or the trunk lid of that car, that would have really upset me. Now it could land on any car. Could That spring could fly around your garage and break anything or even worse, could hurt you or somebody else. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button. Thanks for watching. Click the subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and have a great day.